All right, well, let's take our Bibles, please. We're going to turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20. Proverbs chapter 20. As we begin this evening, now we should be getting close to the end of our little study on practical Christian living. <clears throat> and I'm not sure exactly what we'll be doing next, but I hope it'll be something interesting <clears throat> and uh, something that you'll enjoy doing. All right, well, let's look at Proverbs chapter 20, just one verse as we begin tonight. And we're speaking about the Christian and his faithfulness um, in chapter 20, verse number six. The scripture says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. A faithful man who can find. Father, we pray and ask that you will be with us this evening. Help us, Lord, to uh, strengthen the things that remain. Help us, Lord, to remember these important principles in the Christian life. And help us, Lord, in our walk that we would be uh, walking in a way that is pleasing to you, uh, Lord, in our outward deportment and how we behave ourselves as believers and also what goes on on the inside of us as well in our thoughts and in our character. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless those especially who are not with us this evening. We thank you, Lord, for those who join with us on Facebook and some are very, very regular and faithful as they watch the services and we're, we're grateful for that, Lord. We pray that you might bless them Whatever need they might have at the home, maybe it's sickness or unable to get out or whatever it might be. But Lord, we just pray that you'll be with them and that you will be very near to them. and Give them a sense of your presence, Lord, even there in their home. And Lord, be with those who are here tonight and help us this time to be profitable, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, many of these Wednesday night messages, which we have you know, coined a practical Christian living, uh, they have to do with two parts of us. There's uh, many of these lessons deal with the, the inward part, <clears throat> and many of the lessons deal with the outward, the outward behavior. So the Christian and his works and his words and his testimony, Christian and his church, Christian and his song. Uh, we will be speaking about the Christian and his prayers and his witnessing. Um, but those are the outward expressions of our, our Christian faith. Uh, but they're really dependent upon the inward uh, character. We have looked at the Christian and his convictions uh, just the other week. And we have looked at the Christian and his integrity. And tonight we're looking at the Christian and his faithfulness. And I think uh, integrity and faithfulness kind of goes together. These are the things on the inside. These are the, really the things that make uh, the person. And if you look there at verse number 7... In verse 6 he says, But a faithful man who can find, uh, the just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. I think faithfulness and integrity are those things on the inside of us uh, that are very, very important. I think they are connected uh, together. Well, what is faithfulness? Well, faithfulness is the extent to which others can put their trust in you. I think most of us understand what it is to be trustworthy. Um, reliable, dependable. Uh, certainly we have been dependent upon other people. We have relied upon other people. And that has always come back with a mixed bag. Sometimes people can be very reliable, super dependable. Um, you can, you know, set your watch by them. Uh, that's just the way they, they are. Uh, and unfortunately, other people are completely unreliable. And they're, they're known for that as well. It's kind of interesting that we, have, we take those traits upon us. We're either faithful or we're not. We're either dependable or we're not. We're either reliable or we're not. We're kind of known for that. Uh, our, our testimony and our reputation will go before us. Now this is a quality. Faithfulness is a quality uh, that is precious and valued by people. But it's also a quality that is valued by God. Because you will remember... Uh, the words of the commendation that the Lord will give to those who have been faithful um, at the judgment seat of Christ, I believe, where he will say, say to many, hopefully uh, all of us, I hope, uh, he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now those words are not idle words. He does not say, well done, thy good and successful servant. We would all like to be successful. But really, what is success? Success is finding the will of God and doing it. 
And it might even be that uh, if we are not successful in the world's eyes, um, you wouldn't think really that Noah would be very successful. He was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years, and there was only eight people on the boat. And, uh, but he was faithful, and he was uh, successful in God's eyes. And so, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now, well done, thy good and influential servant, famous servant, wealthy servant. God puts the, um, the emphasis and the value on faithfulness. There was a missionary I heard about uh, in Mexico some years ago. Uh, at that time, he'd been on the field for 15 years, and he'd absolutely no converts in 15 years. And some pastors said to him, would you not consider yourself a failure? And he responded, well, if I'm a failure, I'm a faithful failure. You know, some missionaries get on the foreign field and they're there for a long, long time before they ever see their first soul. Now, it would be easy to quit under those circumstances. You feel like you're wasting your life. Well, if God has placed you there, then you need to be faithful where God has placed you. Yes. Now, one of the reasons we should be faithful is because God is faithful. Let's look at uh, our Bibles tonight. This is a Bible study. So let's go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter number 7 and in verse number 9. You know, the Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. Um, and it's interesting that, that God uses that particular concept, that particular word. Um, God is love. He doesn't say, you know, be loving as God is loving. Um, the Bible says that God is faithful. Um, he doesn't say, you know, be faithful as I am faithful. But all those, all, all those thoughts and concepts are true. And because God is holy, we should be holy. And because God is loving, we should be loving. And because God is faithful, we should be faithful. He wants us to be like him. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 9, it says, Know, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. So one of God's title is faithful, the faithful God. Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He's speaking here to Israel. In verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. You know, God has chosen a, a, a nation. Yes. You say, well, you know, uh, were they all saved? No, they, there's never been a time in the whole history of the, the nation of Israel when they were all saved. There's many times when uh, many of them were not saved. And of course, today they're not seeing, but that God still has chosen that people and he has a future plan for them. Uh, let's look at uh, Psalm, uh, sorry, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. So what he's saying there in Deuteronomy is, is that God has made his promises and he is faithful. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God and keepeth covenant. What does it mean to be faithful? It means that you, you do what you say you're going to do. You keep your promises. Whatever you have been responsible for, then you keep that responsibility. Um, in, in 1 Kings 8, verse 56, this is Solomon speaking. Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. What Solomon was saying is God, and he doesn't use the word faithful there, but the concept is certainly there in verse 56, that God has done everything he said he would do. He can't, God keeps his promises. Yes, that's, that's faithfulness. Do we keep our promises? Uh, that's part of being faithful. Look at Psalm 89. Uh, Psalm 89 and verse number 1. And follow me. He says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. One of the things we boast of our God is that God is faithful. Amen. He says, you know, um, God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. God who cannot lie. And he is faithful. So one of the things we boast about the Lord is that he is dependable. He's faithful. Um, he's honest. Uh, God does not... Um, Pull the wool over your eyes. He doesn't lead you astray. Uh, many times God will tell you the hard stuff right up front. And then if you read on there, he says in verse 2, For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I thought about that, you know. 
Um, when you know the Bible says the the heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth His handiwork. And one of the things about the universe that we can see every single day is that it's constant. I mean. Uh, the things that God has set in place are faithful. The, the sun is faithful. The moon is faithful. I guarantee you, um, tomorrow morning, at whatever time it is, the sun will rise. And tomorrow night, the sun will set. And they have, I mean, you can get online and they've got it right down to the very second when the sun will rise and when the sun will set. And uh, we have the two lights in the sky, the sun and the moon, uh, which are for times and seasons. And the whole thing is intricate and complex, but it is, it's It's faithful. Um, you can set your watch by it because, um, and that I think reflects the constancy of God. And the God is not fickle. It's not, well, maybe I'll make the sun rise this morning or maybe it won't. No, it's going to be there faithfully every morning. God has put himself on record. And that's what he says there. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. The very heavens dis display the faithfulness of God that the sun will rise every morning. And the seasons will come every year. Even, with, even when we don't like winter to come, it still comes anyway. And time marches on. Look at First Peter chapter 4. I'm sorry, look at Hebrews. Uh, first of all, Hebrews uh, chapter number 10. And verse 21. I'm sorry, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised you know, whatever God has, has written in his word, he stands by it. Uh, and that lovely verse in John 14, uh, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I mean, we're banking on that, are we not? Yeah. I think so. What are, what are we going to find to be true? You're going to find that God is faithful. If he tells you it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If he tells you there's such a place, there is such a place. Now, I skip one of the verses. Look at 1 Peter 4, 19, and then we'll go back to Lamentations. 1 Peter 4, verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit their keep, the keeping of their souls to him, to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. In other words, you can, you can commit your life, you can commit your soul, you can commit your life, you can commit everything uh, to God because he's trustworthy. You're putting your soul, you're putting your life in his hands. But it's the safest place it could ever be because God is faithful to keep um, what we have committed unto him against that day. Look at Lamentations chapter 3. This is a wonderful passage of scripture. This is during the time when Jerusalem has been destroyed by the Babylonians. The city has been burned, people have been killed all over the place. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, is weeping over Jerusalem. Is there any hope? Verse 21. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So just like the sun comes up every morning, God's compassions fail not. You say, well, God would get tired of me. Surely his compassions will run out. Well, the Bible says his compassions are new every morning. His mercies are constant. God is faithful. You can depend upon him. Amen. Thank God that he is who he is. He is God is trustworthy. He's reliable, dependable. You can take him to the bank because whatever you have invested, whatever you've committed to the Lord, um, it's not going to be lost. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to fail. God will keep his promise always to us. Well, mate, you could stop the message right there, and that would be enough for us uh, this evening. Uh, it's a wonderful truth, the faithfulness of God. But as followers of Christ, we are to be like him. Christ is faithful. God is faithful. And faithfulness should be the attribute of every, every believer. In other words, whatever our hand findeth to do, we should do it with all of our might, and we should do it faithfully. Well, let's look at some verses. Look at Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31. So in what areas of our life should we be found faithful? What should be, and again, this is uh, something that we all know, and these, these are just reminders of tonight of things that we should already have in our lives. Um, God wants us to be faithful, and I'm sure many of us are mindful of that. Sometimes we just need to be refreshed and be remembered 
that we do need to be faithful in every area of our life. And so what about uh, our marriage, faithful in marriage? And Proverbs 31, uh, look down at verse number 10 through 12. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him, I love this wee verse, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You know, sometimes things start out nice and sweet and then it goes, it goes, you know, to a bad place. And it says here of this uh, 31, Proverbs 31 woman, that she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So in our, in our marriages, um, can our spouse, uh, can our spouses trust us? Can they depend upon you to fulfill your responsibilities? Now here in Proverbs 31, it's speaking about the woman. And it says that her husband, the heart of her husband, doth safely trust in her is that the kind of um person we are uh, to our husbands that um through our lives that we will do them good and not evil all the days of our lives that as a wife that my husband can trust me and have no doubt about who i am what i am and the commitments and the faithfulness to, to our marriage and of course that's here in proverbs 31 but we can swap that around for the ma- for the men as well am i what i'm supposed to be for my wife am i dependable you know, uh, our wives have, uh, have needs, and many of those needs uh, the husband is responsible for. It's my responsibility to keep my wife um, comfortable. Uh, the Bible speaks that, uh, that we're to cherish our wives. Uh, the word cherish means to keep warm. And uh, we're to feed our wives, okay? We're to nourish, and cherish. Nourish means to feed. Cherish means to keep warm. Now, those are very basic things. Um, but there's many responsibilities I have a husband, uh, as a husband, can my wife trust me to be there for her, whatever her need may be? Um, I remember Dr. James Ray at BIMI when we were doing the orientation class for, um, for BIMI as missionaries. And, you know, some of, the, some of the conversations are quite blunt and frank, you know, and it's important. But uh, one of the things he says, you know, if, if it concerns your wife, it concerns you as a missionary. Just because you're a missionary, you can't just, you know, pu- push your wife over to the side and, and uh, you're, you're doing the Lord's work and she's not important. And he said, you know, if, you're ne- if your wife needs pots and pans in the, in the kitchen, it's your job to get the pots and pans. And I would, I would suggest get her the pots and pans that she wants and the, pa- the pans that she needs. I mean, now I'm not saying, you know, buy your wife a vacuum cleaner for her birthday or something like that. But whatever she has, whatever she needs, um, birthday presents are separate and uh, they should be special. But whatever she needs in the house, uh, can she trust you? Can she depend upon you to be faithful, to take care of what she needs? And so in the marriage relationship, uh, we complement one another. We have different needs. But um, the husband should be faithful to his wife. And the wife should be faithful to her husband so that the heart of either wife or, or husband uh, can safely trust. And there's a confidence there. And that confidence will, will breed uh, peace and love and joy in your home and in your marriage. It's really, really important. This is a very, very important area to be faithful. God will be faithful in your marriage. If you don't, it's going to be a world of tears. And uh, all of us from, you know, whatever's happened in your life in the past, you're hearing this tonight and you could say, well, from this point on, I'm going to do all that I can possibly be uh, to be faithful uh, in my home. And then what about faithful in business? Look over at chapter 25 of Proverbs and verse number 13. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. So you can imagine on a 95 degree, uh, degree day out here, and you're out in the field, uh, maybe lifting hay, and you're absolutely roasting, and uh, somebody brings you a big ice cold something or other. As the cold of snow and time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send them. Um, you want 
uh, to refresh and to bless the people you work for, then be faithful. A faithful messenger. In other words, it's, he's somebody, that boy is somebody I can depend upon. I can rely upon him. He's, he's so um, uh, reliable for, for all that I ask him to do. And uh, at business, the boss can count on you to do what he's asked you to do and to do it in the right way. Now, we're living in a time where that's a thing of the past. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems like the generation we have right now, they don't know how to do anything. They don't do it right. And they don't care they're not doing it right. And I, I, would, I would hate to be um, uh, an employer in today's market right now because they can't even get them to come to the work. And the first thing they don't like, they just walk off the job. And they're gone. That's no way to live. And it's no way for society to live. And it's no way, way for a Christian to behave. A Christian should be faithful. And uh, whatever the boss wants. Uh, whatever the boss needs. You should do your very, very level best. To be the best employer uh, that he has. And that means being faithful. Yeah. And one of the things that that means is showing up. On time. To work. I mean that's just normal stuff. That we learned many, many years ago. But again. Uh, Lots of people think that that's like an option. You know, they just come in when they want to, or if they want to. Well, you won't be able to hold down a job very long like that. And uh, I think our society's littered with people like that, and I think to the frustration of many employers. So as a Christian, we are to be faithful um, in our employment and in our business. And then in friendship, look over Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11 and verse number 13. A tale bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. You know, if somebody's dependent upon you, maybe they're sharing their heart with you or they're telling you stuff that is, um, that they're secret things or uh, confidential things. And can they depend upon you to keep it confidential? I mean, a pastor has to be um, in a situation where um, someone can share um, confidential things with the pastor, knowing that, the pa that it's not going to be an illustration on Sunday morning, right? Now, there are exceptions to that, like my family, my place. Like, you know, you have to. I saw a ball cap there recently where it had this warning on it warning, um, what do you say may be used in the Sunday morning service as an illustration or something like that, you know? Um, but certainly when it comes, with all seriousness, when it comes to things that are confidential, um, can that person trust you? Can you be a faithful friend that you will not use that against them or even let it slip uh, where it may bring uh, hurt to them? Uh, in our friendships, we have to be truthful and we have to be dependable. Look over also another side of that is Proverbs 27. Um, in other words, we shouldn't say things that should not be said in those relationships. But sometimes we have to say things that should be said in those relationships that's not easy. In Proverbs 27 verse 6, it says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. You see, the enemy um, will stab you in the back. The enemy will talk about you behind your back. The enemy will kiss you like Judas. But a, a true friend, a faithful friend, will come to you and tell you the truth, even if it wounds you, even if it hurts you. Um, you know, if, if I have a, 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 you know, a, a suit on my suit or something, you know, and I don't see it and I'm walking around, and you say, well, if I say something, that, you know, I, should, I don't want to, it's going to be embarrassing to say something about the mark on his jacket. But a faithful friend will walk right up to me and say, Tom, look at your jacket. Oh, <laughs> and get yourself sorted out right there, you know. A faithful friend will do that. Amen. They won't just be, well, they will, will not be embarrassed. They'll just tell you the, I'm going to tell you the truth. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And by the way, um, we should, if we're on the, on the, the other end of that, we should realize that that's actually a gift Amen. for somebody to be love you enough and genuine enough to be your friend to come and tell you what you need to know. Now, they should do it in the right way, obviously, um, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. And then, faithful in our service to God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Faithfulness is, is really doing the right thing. 
It's doing the right thing. God always does the right thing. And sometimes the right thing is not the easy thing. Sometimes it's the hard thing. You see, that's where it comes in the integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing even if it's hard, even if nobody's looking. In 1 Corinthians 4 and verse number 1 and 2, Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, the servants of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, steward is like a servant. He's in charge of stuff that doesn't belong to him. And he has to report back to the master. Um, just, just like a, a, a boss and an employee. Um, he's given responsibilities. And the thing that's required in a, an employee, re- required in a servant, required in a steward, is that you have to be found faithful. The scripture speaks about this in other places as far as, you know, don't be pilfering. Um, don't be robbing the till. Um, you've got to be, you've got to be, you've got to be honest. You've got to be, you have to have character. You've got to be, you've got to be faithful. And it's required in servants and in stewards to be found faithful. Look over at Second Timothy uh, chapter number two. In serving God, the greatest ability is availability. And what I mean by that is that you are faithful to that calling, whatever that calling may be, whatever God has for you to do. Now, Paul here speaking to Timothy in verse 1 of 2 Timothy 2, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, Paul did not say to Timothy, Now, just go out and teach anybody you want to. You know, some, some people um, uh, are not able to be taught. Some people don't want to be taught. But the thing that Paul put down here as the requirement for Timothy selecting people to teach so that they in turn would teach other people is that they had to be faithful. You know, he didn't even say the same commit thou to the intelligent people in the church. You know, some, some very intelligent people are, are not faithful. And that's not what God is looking for. God is looking for faithfulness, faithful people. And, you know, I've said this, I think, several times in the church before, but um, when it comes to serving in the ministry here, and I'm, you know, I'm looking for people that maybe fill a certain uh, area of ministry, um, the first thing I'm looking for is, are they there all the time? Are they there all the time? And are they, uh, you know, we're going to start Sunday school, God willing, next year. And by the way, by the, by the, probably the first week in January, we're going to give you a little um, application form to see um, who may be interested and what your abilities are. And we're going to put that out there. And that's not saying that you will get a position as a teacher or whatever, but um, one of the things that may be on that little questionnaire is, are you faithful? Because you can't have somebody come in to teach Sunday school. They're teaching boys and girls the Bible and the Christian life. And so they come this Sunday and then they miss next Sunday and they come the following Sunday and the following that Sunday and then they, they, they miss the next Sunday. What are you teaching those children? That it's basically optional. Yeah. And the, the, the degree of your faithfulness really dictates um, you know, how serious it, it is and you're, you're not dependable. You can't. So p- people who serve in the church have to be dependable. Right. Now, we got people like sick tonight. You know, God understands that. We all understand that. I hope you understand that when I get sick and I'm laying in bed at some point this winter, maybe. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but it might. Um, but you know what happens if, I mean, you wouldn't keep me as your pastor very long if I, you know, if I skipped, uh, like, you know, every third Sunday or something. And, uh, and I, <laughs> I know pastors that do that. I mean, they have yearly sabbaticals and they go away for a whole year or they go away for a whole summer and... And they don't preach for like three or four months at a time and all of that. Well, you know, the church wants. But to me, a pastor has to be faithful. Yes. And, you know, I'm not perfect. But for really for the last 40 years, I've been doing this Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, among other things. The first church we started in Antrim, it was three years where I preached Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and Sunday school four times a week. And I did it without any help for the first three years. It was just me for three years. 
and we didn't even have any. We had the odd special speaker in, but it was it was constantly just me. You say, how did they put up with that? I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, you have to be serious about the calling and being faithful to it. And you can, you know, you should be relaxed and uh, as far as and confident in the fact, you know, if, if Tom is not sick, he's going to be here. Yeah. Now, you know, I do need vacation. I go, do need to go see my family now and again. But for the most part, my manner of life is I'm going to be here. Yeah. So that should be also true of others that um, are serving as a Sunday school teacher, um, as, as people with the children's church or master club. Um, or whatever that might be, the key thing that we're looking for is faithfulness. Because in that faithfulness, we ha you have a testimony. You have an example. They're there all the time. They're dependable. And I'll tell you something. There's people in this church that are so, so dependable and are so faithful. And I'll, I'll just, for me, see, here's the thing. There are people who have all kinds of abilities. You know, you've heard of people who were like geniuses, but they couldn't finish college because they couldn't keep coming to class. They kept cutting classes. They never graduated. And they were smarter than most of the people there. But then you have some wee girl or some wee guy, and he just, he's, he's, you know, he's not, he's not 100%. He doesn't have a high IQ, but he works hard. Everything he gets, he's there at the class. He goes to um, uh, late, late night uh, study sessions and uh, he works and studies and all of that and the guy graduates mm -hmm. because he's not brilliant it's not that he's gifted but he's faithful he stays at it he's reliable and trustworthy and dependable to stay after his schooling and he makes it I knew, I knew people in school who were talented they could play the piano play any instrument uh, they were great speakers and they never even stayed in school. They never amounted to anything. Do you know why? Because you couldn't depend upon them. They couldn't, they couldn't bring themselves to stick to it. And to stay after it. And to be faithful. And so what is a, what is a pastor looking at people serving in the church? Is it great brilliance? Not really. It's about attitude. And it's about dependability. And about faithfulness. And, and all of those things. That's the thing that really counts. So it's like integrity though. I want integrity as long as it doesn't cost me anything. Well, it's the same thing with faithfulness. We want to be faithful. This verse we started with, you know, every man, this is back on Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And we all want to say, we all like to think we're faithful, or we all like to believe that we're reliable and dependable, and many of you are. I was going to say a moment ago, the thing that brings me greatest joy in pastoring a church is when I see people here there all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. The thing that disturbs, not, not that the fact that they're brilliant and they're gifted and they're able to do this, that, that, doesn't, bother, that doesn't faze me really. It's nice, but it's not really the main thing. The main thing is faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. And the thing that disturbs me the most is uh, not that people are not gifted, but the people that, that some people just can't be dependable. They can't stick at it. And sometimes people will come to church and they'll be here for six months. And then they're gone. And there'll be another church for six months. And then they're gone again. And, they'll be in, and they just hop. Church, we call them church hoppers. They're all over the place. And they've, and they've got into this routine and this habit of not sticking to it. And it hurts them. And it actually hurts the churches as well. So the thing that really bothers me the most is, is unfaithfulness or people who could be there who are not there. Because uh, that says something about our faith. You see, every man or most men will proclaim every one his own goodness. You know, Peter said to the Lord, Lord, I'll not deny you. These all might deny you, but not me. I'll die with you. I'll die with you tonight. And Peter, uh, Jesus looked at Peter and says, Peter, before the cock crows in the morning, you will have denied me three times tonight. Peter couldn't believe that, but that was what happened. And see, it's one thing to proclaim everyone his own goodness. So words are one thing, and commitments are one thing, but where the rubber, where the rubber hits the road is the actions. It's, it's what actually happens. Are we going to be faithful? When, 
we have that opportunity to go or not go and we, we don't really want to go and but then I want to be faithful I need to be dependable yeah. and you come and not really others you know you know this yourself it's not just it's just not the preacher that that affects um, when you come into this church maybe on a Sunday morning and there's 105 people in here you're like wow this is fantastic you know the atmosphere the buzz is brilliant it lifts everything you come in here on a Sunday morning and there's like 45 people and it's like well where is everybody today and it, it just it's a downer it's just something about it so the greatest ability is availability to be there well is it important we'll look over at Psalm or sorry Proverbs 25 Proverbs 25 and verse number 19 and we close with this it says confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint so being unfaithful may not be immediately bring harm to the individual but it will harm him after a while it'll affect the guy's character it's corrosive upon a person's character um, he learns to have a habit of being unreliable and undependable. And really, that's, that, that becomes um, his handle. You know, he de- basically a person's reputation, a person gets known. You know, there's people in here right now that I could call their names and I could say, that person, that man, that woman is as faithful as the day is long. Yes. They're just always there. Uh, I don't have to worry about it. They're like part of the, I use that phrase, they're part of the furniture, right? Some of you are part of the furniture. And I'm telling you, for a preacher, that's, that's such a blessing. But what about if you put your confidence in someone who is not reliable? How does that affect other people around you? If you're known to be, and I wouldn't say anybody in here it would be known to be unreliable because you're here tonight. Um, but what would be the, the, the problem um, if you were not faithful, if you were unfaithful, if you're not reliable. Well, when you think about, this is kind of the flip side to, that, the, to this, those who put confidence in an unfaithful man, an unreliable person, uh, the untrustworthy, the undependable, um, what, how, what kind of effect does that have on the people around you? What kind of uh, effect does it have upon your, your home? Uh, your spouse really can't? Their heart cannot really trust in you. Do you know what that does to a marriage? I mean, life is tough enough without having that hanging over your shoulder. Um, what about your children? Um, and I, I don't suspect that here, but you know, some kids worry about whether their mommy and daddy are going to get divorced um, or where daddy's going to be six months from now. You know, there's you, you wouldn't believe the the pain that you have avoided. In being a Christian and following the Lord, there's there's all kinds of complicated problems that families go through out there. Um, but if you will follow what God has taught us and be faithful, then you'll have a happy wife, happy wife, happy life. There's a lot of truth in that. And uh, tell you what, I thank God for my wife. Where is she? In the nursery. You can talk about her. Um, I just thank God. And you know, I've told you this before, you know, life has seasons, you know. And you know, when you're early marriage and then the children come along and there's a lot of stress with that and raising children and so on. And then you wake up one day and they're all gone and it's just you and your wife. And uh, let me tell you something, that is the, I, for me anyway, that's the sweetest part of life is when the children are gone and it's just me and Leslie. And I don't know what it, what it is, but you know, when we were, Reason, like, I think, now you, you might think I'm high strung now a wee bit, but I mean, I was worse back then, and I don't know how she lived with me, to be honest with you. Um, but just it's when things got, you know, as things progress, I don't know, it's, maybe it's old age, not, not that I'm really old, but you mellow out, you learn things, and it becomes really, really sweet. And it's a great, it's a great, it's a great thing. But, you know, nurture that, cultivate that. So that one day when you do wake up and the kids are gone and the person you look across the table at, that she's not really a stranger, that she's the love of your life and you're happy to be with them. Because life can be sweet. It's designed to be that way. But you've got to put the time in. You've got to be faithful and dependent so that 
her heart does safely trust in you and his heart does safely trust in her. And then your boss, I mean, you're faithful, you're faithful in your work, tell you what, you'll claim the, you'll claim the ladder. Um, what happens is you become indispensable to your boss, to your employer, to your firm or the place you work for. I mean, there's nobody who works like you. Nobody can get it done like you. You're faithful. You're there. They can depend upon you. And um, you'll do well. And then your friends will trust you. And you'll have friends. Because you've made friends and kept friends. And you have maintained those friendships. And then in the church. The pastor and the other brothers and sisters in church. Can, are happy for you to be there and to serve. Because you're a blessing. And they don't have to worry about you. But what happens if that's all the opposite? And you're unfaithful and you're unreliable. Well, he puts it like this. He says, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble, especially when you need him in a time of trouble, is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Now, all of us, I'm sure, have had, you know, toothache, broken tooth. Broken tooth is pretty serious. And a broken ankle. I mean, that's if ever, a sprained ankle is one of the worst things you can ever have. I mean, it's terrible. And you know, you could be physically healthy in every other way. You could be as strong as an ox. You could run the marathon. But if you've got a broken tooth, that's the only thing that gets your attention. Yes. You could be such a healthy, robust, um, strong person. But one thing goes wrong, a broken tooth, and that's all you can think about. And here's a person who has abilities, he has gifts, uh, he has talents, there's things that he can do like nobody else can do. But the problem is, you can't rely on him. And in a time of trouble, he lets you down. Oh my goodness, broken tooth, broken ankle. That's all you can think about. He let me down. It doesn't matter how good the person is. If he's not reliable, it negates everything. It reverses everything. And so... Faithfulness is really not just a, you know, a side thing. It goes down to the, it goes to the core of our character. Mm-hmm. Can people depend upon us? Are we faithful? Can God depend on us? I mentioned there last week about uh, Mary uh, and Martha, how the Lord put them through people that he dearly, dearly loved. And he trusted them with something that was very precious. He, uh, he waited until Lazarus had died before he came. And he knew that they were going to go through all those emotions. That's why he went through those emotions too. That's why he groaned. That's why he wept. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus. But in so doing, many, many of the Jews were going to see Lazarus come back after four, four days in the grave. And they were going to believe upon Jesus and they were going to get saved. But in order for those to get saved, Jesus had to do this. He says, if you'll believe, you'll see the glory of God. Just hang in there. Believe and you'll see the glory of God. But Jesus had to trust them with that huge storm and problem in their life. What can God trust us with? Or is there some things he's holding back from us because we're not really dependable? Being faithful is really important. And so one day, I hope that you and I, at the judgment seat of Christ, will hear the words from Jesus. Well done, thy good and faithful, faithful servant. Let's pray. Father.